we have former Real World Denver and MTV challenger Tyree Ballard. Thank you for being here today, Tyree. Hey, no problem, man. Thanks for having me, bro. All right. So I'm going to start with what was it like growing up for you? Like, what were your hobbies and interests? Um, well, I'm a Nebraska boy, so um, a lot of that revolved around watching football or playing outside. Um, um, martial arts, I always uh, was, I've been in some form of martial arts since I was 12. Uh, I'm a huge comic nerd, and I'm a huge WWE and WCW historian. So, like, I was, I was pretty much in the geeks, in the geek land, so. Yeah, Trey was telling me, you guys are both uh, talking about comic books a lot in uh, Super oh, Hero. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, man, yeah, but Trey, me, me and Trey had, me and Trey had some combos, bro. Um, he doesn't appreciate and respect the greatness that is Cyclops like I do, but, you know, we'll, we'll get him over that hump one of these days. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm a, I'm kind of a big uh, Hulk and Spider-Man fan. I, I'd say I'm more so on the uh, Marvel side than DC. Have you, but, bro, have you been reading Immortal Hulk? I'm not big on the comic books. I'm more so big on like the movies and the uh, video games. Bro, read Immortal Hulk. It is a good series. But uh, on in regards awesome. to the comic books, did you play that? Did you play the Hulk game uh, Ultimate Destruction? Yeah. It was pretty much Grand Theft Auto. It was him running around and just bashing the shit out of stuff for the whole yeah. fun ass game, bro. Wasn't it? Yeah. Did you Did you play uh, DC vs Mortal Kombat? Oh yeah, oh yeah. But but the truth of the matter is, I've always been a Capcom versus Street Fighter guy, and I I oh I got I'm that terrible. Too. Yeah. Oh, I mean, you know, when we get done, you can throw your gamer tag on and he catch his heat real quick, bro. You know, and it's, <laughs> oh, okay. I gotta. That, I mean, I, I gotta. Like, like, I mean, I got an Iceman, Storm, and Sentinel combination that might tear your head off. That's all I'm saying. All right. I'll bookmark that then. Cool, cool. <laughs> all right. Um, so how did you get into uh, Real World, and what was your casting process like? Oh, man. This question is making me feel so old, bro. It's been a while, bro. Because, like, man, I, I hate to hit it with it back in my day. Because, like, when I did it, though, it was in... My, my my casting season was like 05, I think, man. You know, I've been out here. Um, but it was in Lincoln, Nebraska. The uh, casting the casting call was in Lincoln, Nebraska. It was at a it was at a bar called Brothers. Okay. Okay. And the joke the joke always was the, the, the name of the bar was called Brothers, but the only black people there that was a cook. This is Lincoln, Nebraska, so I mean we gotta we have these jokes. Um, I went in there with a guy named Chow, he's a friend of mine. Um, and we cut the line, no bullshit. We cut like 150 people. I don't know how we did it, but we ended up cutting the line for 150 people. We, um, we got to the point because they, uh, they, they, we did a group interview. Um, I'm sorry, can you hear me? I'm not, I'm, I'm, yeah. I kind of move it. I move a lot, yeah, so my bad, yeah. bro. You're good. Um, but there was a group interview that we did, and it was, I remember the PA's name. Her name was Megan, and I remember it was something. Where it was they were, they were purposely like gauging us to see how we were doing, to, like see what our reactions were. And you know they started asking for these stories, and you know you know being me being in college, and, you know the wild stuff I was doing back then. I gave them you know one of the cute one, you know one of the sex stories. But then, you know I, I, I used to watch the Real World before you know I got on. I saw Tech, I saw Cyrus, you know I saw Karamo. Um, and shit, honestly, when I was filming. When I was filming the, the, the uh, when I was filming the Denver season, I snuck out of the house to go meet Johnny, Kenny, Evan, and uh, uh, Fitz. That's I can't even say her name right. I'm sorry. So, um, yeah, um, but yeah, I remember I snuck out to go meet them at a bar called at a club called Vinyl, in, like 2006 during when my season was filming. So like I used to watch. I used I used to be a fan before I was ever got on the show. Uh, well, maybe that I wouldn't say a fan. Some the word fanatic. I don't, People don't take that too far. Uh, but I enjoyed the show. Um, but So they would ask, you know, so I gave them the, the sex story. And, but, like, I think what really got me noticed during the casting process was that, uh, I hate to bring it up, like, source subjects, but around this time, this was still during the Afghanistan war and the war in Iraq and things of that nature. So, you know, I think someone brought up about, you know, someone brought up 9-11 and, you know, of course, everyone, you know, went through their somber tones and, you know, then someone turned it into a real, you know, USA, USA, rah-rah situation. And me being the political science major who I was, at that time, I was in international law, 
you know, I'm sitting there, I look at him like this, and I say, okay, so look, you know, I'm sorry for, you know, who all we lost, man, but I want you to keep it 100%. I mean, I'm going to keep it 100% with you. The war in Iraq is technically illegal by George W. by George W. Bush's own definition. And I think I said something along the lines of uh, Bush described the war as a preemptive, oh, excuse me, the, Bush described the attack as a preemptive strike, but by international law, it was a preventive strike. You know, and those things matter. And I just and I started naming off UN resolutions. I said UN resolution 1776 says this. UN resolution amended, you know, 474 says this. And people were sitting there looking at me like I'm crazy because I walked in there, you know, with a chain and a do rag on and sweatpants. So <laughs> you know, I'm not going to sit there and be like we know it is what it is. We know what it we know what it is when some guy walks in with a do rag, you know, a gold chain on and a white beater. I mean, anybody, nobody really look, nobody, nobody's really checking for this guy with the political acumen. Um, but, you know, so people started looking up looking up what I was saying, and they started looking at me. He's like, yeah, so read it. No, we don't need to read it. No, okay, so I'm right, though, right? And they just quickly moved on. And at that point, Megan noticed me. So after the group interview, you know, they took us, you know, she took me aside, and she gave me this huge-ass packet to fill out, okay? And I remember that packet. It, it legitimately was like 110 pages or something like that. You know, I filled it out. You know, I started the, the legit interview process. I went to, uh, shoot, I did a lot of phone interviews for 89 months. I went, and then, like, when they called me for the final interview, like, when I got on the plane, I knew I got it no matter what, because I was like, hey, man, they're not going to fly me out here just nothing. Because I was in Omaha, Nebraska at that time. That's an expensive ass flight. I don't care how much money you Mary calls. That was an expensive flight. They're not going to just fly me out for nothing. So I felt like I got it, but, you know, went through the final interview, you know, they hit us with the record yourself, you know, re hey, record your reaction real quick. You know, now I knew that was it. Um, and I remember I was excited to go to Denver, but I feel like I was, I kind of feel like I got cheated because I got sent to Denver because the season, <laughs> the season before me was in Key West, Florida, you know, palm trees yeah. and all this, all this shit. The season after me was in Sydney, Australia. Um, and I was going to a spot that is considered a vacation spot for Nebraskans in, uh, excuse me, Nebraska's in anyway. So I yeah. was, I was legitimately eight hours away, you know, when I, um, you know, when I hopped on the train to go to, uh, to the Denver house. Uh, but it was a fun process, man. But it, my God, it was nerve wracking. It was right. really, really nerve wracking because there was a lot of times, you know, they left, they left you in limbo. Uh, and there's a lot of time while you're in the limbo where you think about, man, did I say something wrong or did, could I, should I say this or, you know, and no matter what, like when I first started the process, I didn't care if I made it. I didn't. It was, it was all on a whim. It was a joke. I had no intentions on actually making the show. But around the second to third interview, the second or third phone interview, like, you know, you get your hopes and you, know, you get involved. It's like you get invested into it. Like, oh, man, I this is kind of getting boom, man. I want to make this, man. I want to get it. So, you know, those six to seven months where you don't hear anything is nerve wracking. Right. Um, so I spoke with uh, Dan on his experience um, the other day, and it seems like Dan consensus. Uh, yeah. It seems like consensus is pretty much um, in agreement on it. But um, I want to hear your island experience since uh, you uh, lived it out. Okay. Um... <laughs> The island was so miserable that the fans watching us on the island was miserable. That's how miserable it was. Okay. Um, now, there were some good, fun stories that came out of the island. There were some fun times that came out of the island. You know, I got some, you know, I ended up finding some cool people on the island. But if there was, but if they told me straight up, like, you would do, you would, like, Ty, do you want to do another island? I would even tell them, you need to pay me all my money up front right now. Um, and then double it, or no. So that was a horrible, horrible experience. It was, it was, you, it was, I, I, don't, I don't know. How, how freely am I, don't, I don't, how freely am I allowed to speak? I don't know if I'm supposed to break tape here or not. Oh, no, yeah, you're but, good to oh, man. I've, okay, but, I okay, before, cool. So. All right, cool. Um, but it seemed, it always seemed like the island was just like supposed to be the answer to Survivor. And my God. Like they turned it into an internment camp, and I hate saying things like that because I've never actually, I've got blessing, I've never actually had to be in an internment camp. But when they purposely drop food and then start rationing off the food, so you purposely are more miserable, 
you know, so you have more miserable interactions. That's all. It's, it's just a horrible experience. It was an absolute horrible experience. Um, there were some fun times on the on the island. I will say this. Okay, so I'll give you I'll give you probably the best story. And to this day, to this day, I think Kenny Santucci tells this story better than anybody else. Um, okay, so wait a little bit, a little bit of back history. Okay, so you know they production the powers that be um, to make it worse on us. They had their camp literally right next to where we were at. So you would smell like the barbecuing and the food and things like that while we're eating, you know, dirty seawater rice, you know. So, of course, we're angry as hell. So at this point, you know, around like the first week, you know, I think we made it through like the first couple of days before like people started getting hip to it. But like, you know, at the end of it, like we just decided, hey, man, we got to we got to go over there. So <laughs> myself, Abram, Dave uh, and Dan all at one point in time snuck over to that side of the bank or kept watch to the, uh, to the other side of the gate to go steal food and condiments. Um, because of course we were eating salt rider rice. And when you have salt water rice, you know, mustard tastes good when you put it on them, trust me. Um, so, you know, we went over there a few times, stole what we get, you know, stole what we needed to, you know, and you know, we shared it with the family. You know, we shared it with the rest of the team. You know, I think you know after a while, you know, Johnny got in on it, K- uh, Kenny got in on it. Um, you know, you know, every all everybody got in on it. Who knew about it? Knew about the stats. They they got in on it. But then they started doing their own trips, okay, which got them in trouble. That's how they and they ended up getting caught up. Okay, they actually ended up getting. I think Kenny ended up getting. Kenny and Johnny got caught with like <laughs> had to be like two hundred dollars worth of shit. Uh, in their bunk, and honestly, and I get props to them, but they did not dime out no one else. They took they took it all on their head. They didn't dime wow. out no one else. Okay, so props to them. Props to them on that, man. Um, but the st- getting back to the original story, bro. So Kenny and Abram went out to do their to do their record or to do some reconnaissance, and Kenny told me. Kenny tells the group that. And, you know, I don't know if you ever got a chance to talk to Abram. Abram was one of the coolest dudes I've ever talked to, but he's kind of eccentric. He's kind of eclectic. He's out there sometimes. Yeah. All right. You know, so he, t- Kitty said that, you know, Abe got dressed all black in, his, in our Under Armour gear, and we had, like, a mask, like a super mask. And, bro, this fool, Kenny told me, Kenny told the squad that he did a run and jump start, jumped on the bed, and did a somersault outside the window like a goddamn ninja. And I've had the image in my head the whole time, bro. And I can see, I, I've seen Abram in his all black do the ninja stealth shit. So I know it's, I know it actually happened. Um, so they went over, Abram went over and got, you know, got got the mess, you know, went through the business, came back, you know, and all. Mm-hmm. Um, props to jo- props to Johnny and Kenny and Evan to, you know, for them who, who them whoever got caught. To uh, I'm sorry, and Derek. I'm sorry, Derek's ass was involved in that shit too. Um, but you know, for every for everyone who everyone who got caught and didn't snitch out the rest of us, good looking out, okay? Because they was cutting fines. All right, I remember that. I, cut, I know. I remember they cut like fifteen hundred dollars on somebody. It was rough. Like yo, um, so that was fun. Um, WWE wrestling on the island was fun. Um, I got the power bomb Derek a few times. Uh, Danimal hit me with his signature move, which was fun. Um, cause Dan's an actual legitimate wrestler. Yeah. Um, and so it was, so like, you know, we, we, it went from just, like, we went from talking mess on the bus, like talking about WWE and he kind of started sort of looking at me, like got offended. Like WWE, I mean, what's your problem with WWE, man? That's the top of the line. Like, I, mean, I do, he said, Hey man, I'm a wrestler, wrestler, man. I do real wrestling. Like, where, where did you wrestle, wrestle? I said, yeah, man, I'm damn the real deal Walsh. I was like, oh. I said, hold on, pal. what's your finisher? No, my finisher's a pump handle slam. <laughs> oh, you a wrestler, wrestler. Okay, cool. I always liked Dan, man. Dan was, um, uh, not only could I goof around with Dan, but I could get drunk with Dan before, you know, unfortunately, not bringing up Dan's past. Dan used to kind of wild out a little bit. But I could get drunk with Dan. Me and Dan could have some really in-depth conversations. Um, and, you know, Dan's one of the first people on those challenges where, you know, like I could just 
legitimately just vibe with that it wasn't, and maybe it's because it was the island too, because uh, you know the other challenges I did before that it was all pretty much competition, you know, the whole time. You know, the island it was island was a lot of hurry up and wait, and I mean just in general, if you waited, if honestly if you waited until the end of the season, you could have you had a better chance of getting to the final than if you actually tried to go for it during the final. I mean during the entire you know challenge. Mm-hmm. Uh, but so that was fun. Uh, I learned that Dave Sky can do a running backflip off a wall during that time. Um, what else happened? I learned West was a mastermind. I think that was the season I learned West was a legit mastermind. I love West. He's an asshole, but he's a good guy. He really is. He's an asshole with a with a hit with a very earned right to be an asshole. I I, I thought about it, dude, because like there's there's some people on the show that, that have a very cocky demeanor and then there's very and and it's like, hey bro, your shit stinks and you need to stop worrying, you need to stop thinking otherwise. But the truth of the matter is, man, I mean, Wes has won too much for him not to have the attitude that he has. He's allowed to have that attitude, Darrell's allowed to have that attitude. You know, I don't necessarily like Jordan because of some of the racial shit I've heard and some of the shit with Nia, you know, but honestly, Jordan is one three now, right, or something like that. Yeah, you three. know, so Jordan's one three. So he if he if he walks into a challenge and he all some hey man, I'm big dog shit, hey man, he's one three. C T has earned that attitude. Landon. A lot of people have Landon has Landon has earned that attitude. Landon has earned yeah. that attitude. Um, you know, there's a lot of OG legit people who have earned that, hey man, I'm the man and you need to respect me when I'm walking through the window kind of attitude. Now, me being the confrontational guy that I am, I'm gonna give you a little bit of love, but I'm not gonna kiss your ass. If you expect me to kiss your ass, we probably gonna end up fighting. That's just the way it's always been with me. Right. And maybe that's what's gotten me in trouble on the challenges, but I I mean it is what it is. Um but no, there's a lot of people I mean, you know, you gotta you gotta show respect when it's time, man. Like, you know, like I said, C T didn't earn that earn that uh, you know, on the girl side, um, uh, Tori has earned that. Ashley has earned that. I don't watch it too much. Car Maria has earned that. Honestly, I've always liked Car Maria. Me and me and Car Maria like both like disturbed. I've always liked Car Maria. More Car Maria. I really have. I don't. I don't really see what the problem is. I really don't. Mm-hmm. You know. But that's just. I don't really watch the show like that to really have too much of an opinion. Right. But. Sorry, right. I kind of a little ramble. Go yeah, ahead. it's all. <laughs> um. So yeah, that was actually going to lead into my next question. I was going to ask. Who would you say that you resonated most with um, on your challenge days? Uh, I'll give you, I'll give you people I resonated on the challenges, and I'll give you a guy who I resonate with off the challenge day. Now, now that I'm out of the game completely, um, there was uh, how can I describe this? How can I say this properly? Hmm. Just because I did not like uh, the JEK Dynasty doesn't mean I didn't respect what they've done on the show during my time. Um, I always had a lot of love for Nehemiah. Um, Nehemiah is one of the only people who's actually has been straight up with me uh, to a fault, and I appreciate that. Um, Nehemiah is actually, from my understanding, the last black winner on the challenges. So I'm, I'm actually kind of pissed off that he hasn't been invited back as much because, you know, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's not really true. That's not true. Jarrell, uh, you know, sorry. We, I think we, sorry, I'm not trying to. I, th- I think Nehemiah on. won more recently than Darrell did actually. Was it? Was it? I thought, didn't Darrell yeah, won like his last cause, one? Cause, um, like Darrell won, Darrell was, Darrell was out of the game for a second, wasn't he? And then he came back and he, won. He one, came back he? and went far. I, I don't think he won. Oh. Half was, uh, oh earlier, shit. Or he went four for four. Four, like four in a row and like yeah. earlier in his uh and then um he took a bit of a break came back and he was about to win um the ruins but then he uh got kicked off for fight and brad was that the um, one i thought he came back on a more recent yeah yeah he came he um yeah the the following season after that him and i oh, know kenny and west kind of banded together to get him thrown in and then he took a seven year uh gap came back and beat um that dude Zach and Johnny in eliminations, and he got to okay. the, uh, he got to the round before the final, and CT beat him. In oh, that yeah. okay. So yeah, it was the Amaya then. Yeah. Okay. Then yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, keep the on, of course, man. But get, yeah, you know, yeah. You know, get Nehemiah on there too. 
Nehemiah should have got another run. Uh, Brandon should got should should get another run. I mean, I'm gonna keep it 100 with you. After rivals too, I deserve another shot of redemption. I'm not gonna go out my way to you know politic and campaign for it, but I got screwed over it. I feel like I deserve a you know a legitimate chance to like erase that. Um, yeah. I think I've done that in other I've done that in other avenues of entertainment. I've become a stunt man. I was able. I was actually um I was actually my first official work. Uh, my first official gig um, was a co- October of last year. I was um I got I actually got choked out by Sean Patrick Flannery in a movie in a, an upcoming movie. So that's gonna be wow. cool. Um, so yeah, you, know, you know I'm you know certified there. You know I was actually in the play Othello not too long ago. Um, okay. So I have I think I'm I think I'm erasing and changing my image. You know. Uh, you know, or erasing that ugly image of my losses, or I don't even care about losses, man. But there's just some ugliness with the reality past. That I just don't, you know, I need to erase. Yeah. But in regards to just speaking on that last opportunity, I don't think anyone would really argue that I that I didn't catch the business. And I think because I did catch the business, I feel like I deserve another shot. You know, especially because I was in shape, bro. I was ready to roll. Right. All right. Um, but so. You know, there's a, you know, um, let's see, who else? Well, there's a couple of, I, you know, I fucking love CT. C, me and CT was mad cool. I was, when me and him was on the X's, we were able to just, always able to just kind of converse and just chop it yeah. up, man. We did spring break a couple of times. He's come, I've flown him out to Omaha a few times to do a couple of gigs. You know, he's crashed at, you know, the homie spot, man. You know, we've played on Gears of War a few times, bro. Oh, it's cool people, bro. I've always like, I've always fucked with his, you know, his ability to not take nonsense, but also, I ain't gonna front like his manip his his ability to be a manipulator. You yeah, know what I mean, you know, because he's a terminator. Let me make mm-hmm. no mistake. Like he's an absolute fucking tank, but he knows how to maneuver through the game to where you know honestly he don't really have to use that terminator shit until it's really time. So props to that. Um, for all the newbies, um, I would probably say more so than anybody was. I'd probably say Turbo. Man, I like yeah. Turbo. I really like Turbo. I like I like the fact that he busts his ass. I like. His honor code, and I like that, that he was ready to, to beat someone's ass over being disrespectful. But I will say this: I will say this, and this is always kind of something that you know kind of irks me, and that always you know kind of followed me. When Turbo, when Turbo was ready to beat someone's ass, you know, and got hot and was ready to fight and ready to defend his honor, y'all, you know, y'all said it was because he was from the old country and that was his honor and that was his system and that was who he was as a person. When I did it, when people was disrespecting me and I was ready to beat someone's ass over it, y'all called me A. Okay. So I'll always forget, I'll always remember that. And, you know, I always, and, you know, I don't like the, you know, I'm not going to sit there and pretend like I don't notice, you know, kind of the differences on how certain things are being handled and how certain things are being, uh, uh, you know, being sent out to the public. You know, I never really thought that was fair because, yeah, I, at some point, I am angry, but I'm happy too. I'm, you know, I'm a positive person when I need to be positive. And honestly, the truth is, I just always, I was always someone that, you know, I just didn't take disrespect well. I always felt that, you know, we need to be in, a, you know, we need to be, you know, we're not cool, we're not friends, man. We shouldn't be acting like I'm supposed to just take you walking up and punch me in the nuts and shit like that. That's like you want to. I guess people treated the real world and the challenges like a frat, but they always like expected you to like only appreciate the hazing. And deal with the hazing, but not have to, you know, any of the love that actually came with it either. It's like I always felt like right. the hazing had to be first, and I never agreed with that. So, mm-hmm. I don't know. um, so heading on to Rivals One, obviously you're going in with um, Davis as your partner. Um, you guys obviously had your uh, little bit of a, you know, butting of heads on uh, your real world season. Um, yeah. what, would you, what would you say that uh, your dynamic like what with him was like heading into that season? Like, were you guys cool at that point? Or oh yeah, man. Me and um the the thing with me and Davis and uh, that whole the whole scenario from our season um, is you know there was enough time between that season and with those incidents you know, to where we was going to become a teammate, you know, to where we were going to become on the same team, you know, to where we were going to be on the same team, to where we can, you know, to where that really wasn't a factor anymore. You know, apologies were said, you know, steps were made to, you know, never repeat them, and, you know, that was the end of it. Um, going forward, I think we were sort of going into that situation, I think we were, I think we were as prepared as we could have been knowing that we were going to be teamed up all right neither one of us was powerhouses in the game 
you know, uh, and I think that both of us felt that, you know, we were going to be going on a lot more hard than anything else. Um, I also feel like that first, I, I hate, I always hate that first game on the Rivals one, man, because it was like, dude, just, just jumping over a cliff, holding each other's hands, man. It's like, like how, that's, that's, that's how we're going to measure who's going to get sent home? Jumping over a cliff? Come on, man. That's, I mean, we're going to measure going home. Let's go fight each other first. Let's go run into each other, shit. But, you know, um, but Davis was a good teammate. I thought I always loved uh, Davis as a teammate, man. He was good people. Um, the, during the elimination, you know, I, during that time, I not only, you know, Wes and Kenny were, you know, at the time, you know, they're monsters, bro. Wes and Kenny both won several times. They're spectacular athletes. You know, I had to endure a good amount, a good two amount of two on ones with them, you know, during a situation where I was not only gassing out, you know, you go 10, 15 minutes against Wes and Kenny, you're going to gas out. It just yeah. is what it is. But also, you know, I, you know, I was doing, having a little issue with the asthma. So it was like, hey, man, I was hit, kind of hitting a double-edged sword. You know, all in all, you know, the better team won that day, man. So I never really tripped about that. I never really, I didn't, I don't know, I, I think if, I think as long as it made sense, why I lost, it made sense why I lost. You know, rivals won, the better team won. You know, on the island, I screwed myself over, you know, doubting myself on the jump, 100%. You know, rivals too, I caught the shaft. It is what it is. Right. Um, so I've obviously heard a lot of people talk about it on rivals too, um, but the uh, humidity in Thailand, could you uh, – kind of walk me through how bad that actually was because i've heard things about bugs and stuff you know too. you know was, uh, you, you you know how bad it was and i and I, I like you bro i like you so much it was hot enough to where someone could pass out in a, a very hot contained area in a spot where the cameras were told they weren't so supposed to film let's just say that mm -hmm. yeah, um, there wasn't there wasn't air conditioning in there at all see that's what i was talking about you're very good very very good that was a that is a spectacular way to bring that up without actually bringing that up. Right. Um, so, so since we're on the topic of rivals, too, this is kind of the thing that I've, uh, you know, been thinking about a while and most uh, looking forward to asking. Um, so obviously, you know, heading into that season, um, your partner's Dunbar. Um, and a lot of people were kind of, like, confused at first as to why uh, you guys were, like, together. They didn't really feel like they saw too much of it. But, um, you know, what was your dynamic like heading in with him? Was there anything that, like, we didn't really see, get to see that um, could kind of be a uh, stem of your rivalry? Yeah. Dunbar? Well, no, no. Uh, the rivalry, I guess, started on the island because, you know, Dunbar was real adamant about getting his protein and his meat. And at some point in time, he just pissed me off. And I said something to the camera about him being a bait. Yeah. And, uh, something like that, and that's what they went off of to make us rivals, which was okay with me. It was like, all right, well, that's what y'all gonna do, man. I mean, cool. I'm going to come physically prepared, okay? I know Dunbar is a former champion, okay? I respect that in game, so I'm gonna come physically prepared. And honestly, my my entire my entire thought process and my game my goal my game plan and my goal was to let him handle all the social shit. All right. I legit. I legitimately was going. Well, my plan was to be a. I don't want to say a pawn, but it was like, like, hey, bro. I understand that I'm not good at this social shit. People say stuff to me, and I got a quick temper. I'm going to shut up, and I'm gonna let you handle this. Okay. Right. When it's time for us to get physical, when it's time for us to make the moves, when it's time for us to try to go, you know, win this be daily challenges. I'm gonna give you 120. percent But you know, if you say that, pretty much, I even, I think I even told him, hey, man, if you think that you think that these people would be a good idea to be an alliance with, and you want to do that. Handle it. Let me know so I don't go and fuck it up. I legitimately was going to give that dude like the wheel because it was like, hey man, I know what the sigma was. I know going into this, like I'm, you know, you know, I'm not, you know, I ain't one shit. So like, no one's gonna, no one's gonna take me serious. But if I show up physically ready and I show up with a different mentality, then okay, cool, people gonna understand. And I showed up physically ready. You know, I showed up with a different mentality. I showed up not, you know, not on some wilding out shit. It wasn't a uh, you know, I, you know, I felt like if I, in times where in the past, maybe I wouldn't bite my tongue. I maybe bit my tongue on certain things to make sure, you know, like things like that didn't decide my fate before I could decide my fate. Uh, when it, but when it's all said and done, you know, uh, from my understanding, Dunbar decided his fate the moment he found out he was you know, teamed up with me, which was a bitch move, you know. Yeah. It's because it's like, I right, man. 
you've won one time. Me and you have gone heads up on one on one mission. It was that ball, and it was that uh, rubber ball situation on the island. And you know, anytime that me and you went heads up, I won. So you've never actually beaten me in anything to where you should be feeling that way. But you know, you know, it's, it's just kind of the way it was, man. The people, you know, people don't give a fuck about you know how you feel about it if you don't win. You know, for right. example, and I'm not trying to I'm not trying to throw you know salt on TJ, but the truth of the matter is, I've been on six challenges. I've been on six challenges. I've seen three to four people try to purposely throw the elimination or, or, um, or, or you know, put themselves up to be like the hero or you know, put themselves up the way to you know, make themselves a sacrificial lamb so that they look good on camera. And I've seen TJ get in their ass. I've seen TJ get in their ass about the integrity of the game. I've seen TJ talk to people about, hey man, yo, there's people who there's people who would have fought for this slide, yada yada yada, whoopy whoopy woo. And when it's all said and done, when it came time to show me any of that same sympathy or any of that same empathy, there was none. It was just straight up, well, this ends your time on the island. And, oh, this ends your time on the show. I was like, God damn, bro. Like, I know you know that he purposely did that, bro. Uh, I guess so, you know, I'm not, I guess, I'm not angry about it anymore, but like, damn, I was, you know, that, that kind of like, you know, some of my, you know, my son, TJ was showing TJ an uh, uh, exuberant amount of love. I've always shown him a, a certain amount of respect. And I thought at least, at the very, very least, like I wasn't expecting at the end of that, you know, when the, you know, after they told us after, you know, after they told us that, you know, we was going, that we lost, you know, I wasn't expecting them to turn around and, you know, flip over the game, even though it was very obvious that he failed, that he purposely failed. You know, if you look at it, man, it was real dramatic too, too. It was ugly. But, you know, I wasn't expecting them to, you know, get get me back in the game and shit like that. But I did at least expect him to turn to Delmar and at least, hey, bro, that was fucked up. You know, but better yeah. than that for Ty. Better than that for Tyree. Tyree's, Tyree's not allowed to be shown as sympathetic or or, or wasn't a, or I wasn't allowed to be shown to be, you know, have mercy because I didn't get along with, you know, certain people. I don't know, bro. I don't know what was the, I don't know what the thinking was behind it, man. But it is what it is. I guess if I ever go on back, if I ever go on now, man, I just understand. Just fucking pay me my money. And, you know, I won't worry about that. I won't, and I'll show up ready to compete, but I won't go out there with no kind of, hopes or, you know, aspirations of, you know, thinking I can actually perform well and that'll be enough to get me to, you know, to some kind of prosperity. I'll understand that, hey, man, I'm just here to get this bread, you know. And that sucks, man, because I liked the show before. I enjoyed, I enjoyed the competitive nature of the show. I never liked it. I never liked the fact that it turned into, into some X Games crazy shit. But, you know, it is what it is. If you sign up for the show, then you go to do it. But I, I always respected that amount of competition, the amount of competition and, um, the the steps that the competitors take to get ready for this competition and so just to just to be shown that honestly when it's all said and done if they don't want you on the show they don't want you on the show yeah i'm not gonna get mad about it man but like i've invested my life was invested on the show for a good amount of years if you really think about it like what's say 2000 and 2006 to 2011 that's five years of my life five years of my five years of like one of the most growing and more most important times of my life where you know I dedicated more to trying to fit in and be better on this show. And I should have just, I should have just been like, fuck it. Yeah. You know, but I don't know, bro. I, there's no sour grapes, man. I, I really don't have sour grapes, but I really do appreciate the you know, opportunity I've been given. Honestly, I wouldn't be able to be, I wouldn't be able to do fight choreography if it wasn't for the show. Dog, I was in Batman Superman. I got blown up in the goddamn building. No joke. As, as an extra, I was in the movie Batman Superman. Wow. That never would have happened. You know, I that never would have happened if I wasn't on the show, bro. I was, I've been able to do a lot of shit. I've traveled countries because of the show. So I'm not, I don't have sour grapes, man. I really don't. But, you know, there's certain things. Like, hey, bro, yeah, man, it's, it's a little, little ugly taste on the tongue. That's, yeah. You know. Yeah, that was kind of going to lead into my next question as well. Um, so I'll just throw these into, like, kind of like a two-in-one kind of question. Um, True. So... Yeah, I was basically going to ask if, like, he threw the elimination or, like, how did you know that he threw it? Like, was it ever said? And um, um, what, what was it like with you guys um, after you left off camera and were eliminated? Because I know they take you guys to a hotel and stuff. Did you guys... Uh, I mean, me and... I knew that he threw the... I knew he threw the elimination just like I knew that he threw the original challenge. Um, you know... I don't know if you remember the first challenge, but it was the challenge where you catch your partner. Okay, like I knew, I know I'm not a jumping guy, so okay, cool, Dumbo, I need you. Know, you gonna have the helmets? I will catch you though. But it was very obvious that he sandbagged the first jump. 
All right. It was obvious that he that he that he um, it was obvious that he threw the elimination because the first two rounds, like I literally held um, Rob, Rob. I literally held Rob and Derek all at, at once. And like you know, I think like the first time he got jammed up, even though I you know I had Rob and Derek. Or else where I had Rob and Derek jammed up enough to where you know he could have made it through, and then like the second elimination, I literally jammed up Rob and Derek enough for him to run past, and he purposely fell. All right, he purposely fell, and then he got up, and then he tried to do a dramatic, you know, that you know longest yard reach for the bell. When if he had just got up and just ran to the bell, he still would have hit the bell, you know. So it was that, and then I think you know honestly the motherfucker admitted it in an interview through afterwards. Which I thought was just callous. It was like, all right, bro. So, like, honestly, you really just don't want to see me in public. It was that. I mean, there was, I, like, I wasn't so mad about that reason. Like, I don't want to punch him in the jaw anymore because of that situation. I do want to punch him in the jaw because of some political shit he said about the black community. Like, I do want to punch him in the face for that shit. But I'm not so much mad about the rivals to shit anymore. But, like, yeah, man, you know, if there's ever a chance for me, for me to physically, you know, rectify that, I will. Um, whether that's in a game or in a ring, I don't care. But, like, yeah, man, I just, it was, like, going to the hotel, man, like, there was, I mean, there was nothing you could do, bro. We were in a different, we were in Singapore, I'm saying, we were in Thailand, and then heading to Singapore, all right? I don't know if you've ever been over over in Thailand, but they don't play that shit. I don't know if you've ever been over in Singapore, but they don't play that shit. I'm not going to nobody's foreign-ass jail. So, I had to do what I had to do in Capcom, and that, I mean, just let me get to my hotel room. All right. What else was I supposed to do? What else was I literally supposed to do? So there was um, no conversation between you guys after that? Well, there was no conversation needed because we knew what, what he did. Yeah. We knew what he did, and there was – there's no part of – and, like, I'm I'm a lot older now, and I have a lot better <clears throat> control over my temper and, you know, just my reactions to who I am. And I know that – I know that when I'm escalating to a point that I know I need to go ahead and calm that down. And that wasn't me back then. At that point in time, if I had to try to have a rational conversation with him, I would try to put my boot on his throat. All right. And at that point, once it, once you're once you're already out the game, ain't no what are you gonna do? Get stuck in a in a foreign prison? What are you gonna do? Yeah. You go that, you, you go home. You yeah. go home. That, you that take, was you and, it, yeah, it was. It was uh, you like, came, you came into that season probably in your best shape you've ever been in. You were like a house of bricks, you know, and he's a big oh, guy bro. too. And uh oh, in that really elimination bro. in that elimination against Derek and Rob, that should have been uh, you know, kinda of like a you know, clear cut and dry who should have won, but re- re- respect to Derek and his speed because he's fast. Because I mean, because we're not gonna disrespect Derek as a competitor, I'm not gonna disrespect Rob as a competitor. Rob it, Rob at that time was two forty and a, and a strong ass ox. It, I'm not going to sit and sit there and say that it was a, it was going to be an easy win, but we should not have lost that. Uh, that we just shouldn't. All right. And honestly, I'm starting to kick myself. I feel like I should have just ran the ball. You yeah. know, whether because no matter what, I would have made it through that shit. But that was but that was unfortunately one of those situations where it was like you know I hate to say it, but I didn't trust on my own abilities at that time, like based off of my own previous experience and my own record. It's like I right, well, you know. You can try to take the ball and run for the glory, you know, but if you lose, it's 100% on you. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, no balls, no glory, but you know what's happened before when you try to go for the glory. You should just try to go for the win. And the win would be, well, do what you know how to do, block, jam, and contain, and let this boy run through the goddamn yard. Because he got enough speed to make it through there. That boy, he was built like an eye back. He was built like a linebacker, so there was no reason for him not to drop his shoulders, except for the fact that he just didn't want to do it. I'd rather him just told me straight up that, we, that he was going to throw the throwage. I really would have. I would have been less mad. Mm-hmm. If, he had a, if, he, if he would have pulled me aside, like at the beginning, and little, look, bro, I came here for the appearance fee, and I'm probably going to sandbag us about it. It is what it is. You could be mad about it or whatever. I probably would have been a little bit upset, but I was like, all right, well, I guess it is what it is, and I wouldn't have at least tried. I would have told TJ straight up, hey, he already said he's going to throw an elimination, so I'm not going to try. Yeah, I had a trump card with that, but yeah, I definitely would have appreciated that better than, you know, me talking to the guy, trying to have, you know, a conversation with the guy, trying to, you know, make sure we're on the same page, him lying to me and pretending like we are on the same page, and him just saying, well, you know, fuck it. Yeah. It was a trash, it was a trash thing to do, but I'm a, I'm a grown-ass man with a four-year-old daughter. It's not something I can really 
you know, yeah. keep, you know, harping up on and be upset about. But it is what it is. But, you know, that's okay. So, like, after that, did you um ever get, like, a call back? Or, like, what was, uh... Um, I got a call for Seasons. Um... And no, I don't. And, but no, after that, I don't. No, I haven't gotten. I haven't gotten too many calls. Um, to be, you know, not necessarily stone stones, but like I kind of feel the way that I lost, along with the lack of sympathy shown from you know TJ in a, in a situation where you know you would expect TJ to show up and speak up. You know, I think I was. That was pretty much my coup de grace. That was pretty much how it was supposed to be done. You know, because I, I mean, I, I guess I, I guess I just don't understand in what scenario. I mean, because they, you know, like I said, uh, we, you know, you brought it up in a very sly way, but you all, you know, I appreciate that. But they, you know, they that was the same season too. So, like, what was the point? Yeah. What was the point? Of, what was the point of embarrassing me, knowing that I, knowing that I was going to get fucked over, and then once I got fucked over, not showing any kind of sympathy, unless it was like, okay, well, you know. We just really don't want you on here, and here's your last little rock. Have fun, take care. So I don't really trip about it no more. That's why I don't, that's also why I don't really try to. I try to keep it respectful, but I don't really bite my tongue anymore either. So, mm-hmm. um, so obviously, a lot of the seasons you went on um, were team based or like paired. Would you have liked to go on a just pure standard individual season, sort of like a oh free my agent? God, yes, please, yes. And because I mean, man. It was just so much politics, bro. It was just so much politics. And then, and during a and during a uh, an individual season, if I'm not good enough, then I don't have anyone to blame but myself. Okay, I've done I've done seasons where I've tried to lone wolf it and failed. I've done seasons where I've tried to turn the other cheek while my partner purposely tried to be as rude and fucked up to me as possible and failed. I've do, I've tried seasons where I've tried to just give my partner the wheel. And just let him decide what, you know, what is going to be our social moves, because I know that in my past experience that, you know, my mouth has gotten me in trouble and failed. Okay. But the one thing I haven't had is just being able to individually show my own individual skill and, you know, have to talk and worry only about me. So I would, you know, I would love to, I would love to do a duel or something like that, man. Because honestly, one, it would give me an opportunity just to, you know, even work out even in training the hard work that I'm already doing. Um, you know, it give me a reason to get back into Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu because I need to get my ground game up. I owe Nate from, uh, I don't know, you remember Nate from uh, yeah. Rivals One? Do some yeah. boxing with Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, bro. I rolled with him a couple times. I actually liked him. I really liked him. I really did. Uh, but he was a monster at Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and he tuned my ass up. So I owe him a rematch. I got to get my skills up. Um, and I hope next time, and the home, oh, my God, and my boy Leroy, boy, please, bro. Next time my boy Leroy gets on there, I hope he wins, but I really do. Uh, that is my guy. That is my dude. Is he, Leroy is one of those guys where it's like, how can you legitimately be mad at this guy? He's just, yeah, how can you be mad? At him? Well, how can you be upset at this guy? He's a good dude. Um, I have, I I have some, I have a couple wins against him. He doesn't like to talk about, but you know, I like, I wouldn't mind seeing him in a in a little elimination situation too. I got some revenge I got to get on him just out of love, just to make sure he knows what's up. Cause he has a, maybe because he has a Hulk tattoo and he's not the Hulk. I'm the Hulk. All right. I, okay. If he's the, if he's the professor, I'm the green star. Okay. And if you don't know the difference, Check the difference, all right? Leroy, I love you, bro, but, man, that's just a tattoo, bro. I'm the Hulk. Me. me. You see this beard guy down? This is, yeah. Beard is full. You know what I mean? But, no, I appreciate you, bro, man. Thank you. Thank you, man. This has been cool. Yeah. Oh, but I didn't rant too, too much, man. I kind of, you know, I kind of go off on tangents. I was actually going to um, kind of broke up get into some things. other stuff, too. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, no, keep going. Keep going. Yeah. Um, so obviously we talked about you being a WWE guy. Um, how long have you uh, been watching that for? <clears throat> Man, since I was a youth, bro, when I was a youngin, uh, my first, my first legit memory of WWE was, uh, Papa Shango putting, no, no, that's not true. It was Jake the Snake Roberts putting the snake on Macho Man when he was tied up in the ropes. 
Uh, now I rem- I went back and watched earlier stuff, but that was probably my like, my first wrestling memory. But now I grew up in pro- in professional wrestling, WWE, ECW, WCW, uh, TNA. Back when they had the original Six Sides of Steel, you know what I mean? Yeah. AJ Styles is one of the greatest wrestlers of all oh, time. Oh yeah, no doubt. Really says, my God, the word phenomenal does not do that man justice. That dude is spectacular in the ring. So I know that uh, you're a fitness uh, trainer now. Um, when did uh, when did you really? Because I know you've always kind of been like you know training for the shows, but um, when did you kind of uh, take a liking to wanting to uh, train other people? Um, and well, I started my fitness career, or my fitness journey in uh, 2008. I was a membership counselor. I used to sell memberships, um, and I used to like sell memberships. I used to send them on their way, and then like I just started watching people as they started working out. And I would, like, communicate with people that I sold a membership to. And, like, hey, man, how's your work? I was going, have you tried this? And that's when I realized, man, I might do better as a trainer. Um, I think I really started to take my fitness, like, seriously, seriously. It was, um, um, it was when I had my trainer, who was a, well, actually one of my best friends. His name is Will. Um, and he trained, he helped train, he actually helped train me for uh, Rivals 2 uh, and helped me with some workouts for Rivals 2 which is one of the reasons why I was in uh, much better shape I was than, you know, any other ones. Um, but after that, you know, I started taking a little bit more of a liking to, like, you know, planning out in the long-term programming of uh, getting people to their fitness goals. And in 2013, I started selling personal training. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, that's not true. In 2011, I started selling personal training, but I wasn't a personal trainer. In 2013, I started becoming a personal trainer, um, and then I moved out to, to uh, moved back out to the Bay Area in 2015, and that's when everything kind of really took off. Uh, and like I be, legit became a life coach, uh, which is actually funny, man. You know, the, the that whole life coach and personal training thing is one of the reasons why you know I got so much love for Kenny um, because I don't know if you follow him on Instagram, man. Yeah, he he's a, a crossfitter. Yeah, he's a crossfitter. He has his own gym, man. But like you know. You know, he he's become a pillar for his for his gym, bro. Like they look they look to him for inspiration. And like as a personal trainer, as somebody who has clients, man, as somebody who has, you know, has helped people change their lives, bro, it's like, hey man, I respect the fuck out of that, bro. I respect what he's doing, man. I really do. Yeah. And honestly, if I'm ever in his area, I'm definitely gonna go in there and try to work out get a workout in. Uh, but there's a lot of um, you know, Emily was another was a really good uh, was a spectacular trainer. Also, um, you know, I'm not going to lie. I never, I was never really, a, I'm not really a fan of her. I was never really a fan of her. And she's not really a fan of me, and that's okay. But I, I as a personal trainer, she's fucking phenomenal. Um, mm-hmm. uh, as, a, as, a, as a life coach, she's absolutely phenomenal. So that goes without, I hope that goes without saying. Um, he was also really good. Um, I'm also a striking coach, uh, kickboxing, strike, uh, kickboxing, boxing, Muay Thai, Taekwondo. Um, so, you know, I got a chance. I've been able to, you know, be able to hold mitts for a few people. I got a, actually got a chance to hold mitts for Dave Batista when I worked at uh, LA Fitness in La, La Cienega. That shit was crazy, bro. Wow. He kicks like a mule, bro. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. He kicks like a mule. Uh, I, and then um, I think a couple months ago, about maybe three, four months ago, on the sneak, I work at Equinox in San Francisco now. Uh, working on becoming a manager, hopefully, because I, you know, Equinox. If I don't go back to, bro, if I don't own my own gym, I'm going to stay with Equinox. Equinox is through this pandemic. Not to give out shout outs like this, but through this pandemic, Equinox is taking care of their workers, and I really appreciate them for that. Um, so if I don't, if I don't own my own gym, then I'm, I'm, you guys got me. But I've been working on my way up to manager, at that, you know, at that spot too. Um, and uh, Ty Dollar Sign was in our location one time, and I, wow. I saw him. I was like. He was going to do cardio, and I just walked up to him. Hey, bro, do you box? He said, "I kickbox." You want to? Hey, bro, you want me to hold mitts for you real quick? Yeah. Hold, hold mitts for Ty Dolla Sign. He got a mean ass kick too. He got a mean ass kick too. He's heavy handed too. He came through on a cross, man. Damn near popped me in my chin, bro. It was nasty. It was nice, though, bro. He's nice. Um, if I can, I, as soon as I can, I'm going to hold mitts for Mike Tyson. No, seriously, bro. Just to see if I can, bro. Just to see how long if I can. Um, uh, on the sneak, just so what we talking about boxing, I want to spar. Uh, I want to spar Darrell just to see how long I can last because like he'll tune me the fuck up. He really will. Uh, I got hands. Darrell got legitimate hands, but I just want to see if I can last more than a round. I really do. I just want to see. He's nice with the hands too. He really is. Yeah. 
He's really nice with the hands. Um, but no, no, man. Um, so yeah, I've been, I've been doing the fitness thing. I'm loving that. I've been able, because of the fitness thing. I've been able to uh, branch out to you know the fight choreography stuff because of my time on the challenge. I've been able to you know do some stunt work. I've mm-hmm. definitely gotten kicked off of a couple uh, high falls before. You yeah, know, you know it's fun. It's scary as shit, but it's fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, yeah, that's awesome, man. I'm gonna ask you a few more questions just to kind of wrap it up. A little bit of a shoot. You know. So. What's your favorite post-workout snack or meal? Um, I mean, if I can get away with it, I want some. I need beef. I'm, I'm on the steak. I'm, I'm gonna go. I, I right now I've been going for something like a steak and some avocado. Yeah. Uh, I've been switching over a little bit more of a ketosis style diet. Um, so I've been trying to uh, amp up my uh, my uh, my natural fats. But so yeah, it's pretty much been beef, avocado, and and I can get away with one of these every now and then. Mm-hmm. Um, what about your favorite uh, body part to train? It man, it used to be chest. I used to be on that more long workout. It was nothing but chest and abs, abs and chest, and chest and arms. You know, and then chest and chest. Shout out to Mark Long, the goddamn Godfather, bro. <laughs> Get him on as soon as you can, man. Mark Long. I'm trying, show, man. Mark Long. Mark Long. He's one of the nicest people I've met on the show too, bro. He really is, man. Cool as fuck, bro. Cool as fuck. Mark Long was always like that guy who was like, man. Mark was. Mark Long was like the Fonz, who like, it didn't matter, like if you weren't popular, he fucked with you. So I fucked with Mark, man. He really is cool. Um, but it used to be chest, but now it's back. Um, back, and I've been working on a lot more Olympic lifts. Uh, you know, my clean and press, my split jerks. Uh, my overhead, my over, my uh, my overhead snatch is trash. So I'm, I'm not. We're not even gonna talk about that. <laughs> what about um favorite cheat meal or snack? Oh, uh, for me, <sighs> ice cream kills me, dude. It's terrible. Ice cream gets me all the time. Ice ice cream is the devil, uh, but also a thin crust. Three meat pizza from Little Caesars down the street. You gotta eat it in the first thirty minutes because you know after that it's horrible. But yeah, that first thirty minutes, that's you can get. You, I can get through a thin crust pizza like that quick. But then of course that's all bloat. You got to do something about it. You put in your body. Yeah, uh, I've asked like a few personal trainers this question that I've had on, so I'm gonna ask you. I want you to rank in terms of your personal preference um, the three main um, fast foods between. Burger King, McDonald's, and Wendy's. Oh man, uh, uh, Wendy's, Burger King, McDonald's. Okay, I could respect that. I would just flip Burger King, and McDonald's, but I totally get where you're coming from. I think Wendy's the, is very overrated. I, I think the burgers. I think burgers. I think the burgers at Burger King are better than McDonald's. The fries are superior. Oh, and I think yeah. you get better. I think you get better options at McDonald's. Yeah, but. You know, in regards to, I think Wendy's myself is like the best, like best chain, and their their breakfast is the best breakfast I've ever had. My God, the breakfast baconator, yes, bro. I gotta try. Go that, get dude. you, bro. Go get you a breakfast baconator. My God, I'm not joking. That shit is spectacular. Wow, I know. It I love the baconators, bro. but I don't like Wendy's fries, and I out of the dessert, their breakfast wedges are spectacular, bro. They're different. They're not like their fries. I'm going to have to do that then. Give, give, you some, give it a run. Let, let that be your cheat meal, bro. Or let yeah. that be your meal right before you get a heavy lift in, man. That'll be worth it. You might get, get the itis, but it'll be <laughs> fine. Yeah. So now I'm just going to ask you that with this last question. What is, uh, how has the coronavirus and being quarantined kind of um, shifted your, uh, you know, what you'd be doing daily? Um, have you had to adjust to that? Um, I've gone from a scenario where I'm up. Uh, up moving actively from anywhere from six to 12 hours a day to where I'm essentially forcing myself to either work out or learn something new, um, or I'm going to do nothing but sit here and smoke weed and sleep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because it's easier just to smoke weed and sleep than it is to figure out something to do, you know? Um, but instead of doing that, you know, I've you know started relearning. I'm learning how to code. So it was like, well, I might as well, might as well use the time as much as you can. I hate when people say things like, if you, if you don't come out of this with a new hustle, then you wasted the time. I don't necessarily agree with that, but I'm not going to be 
one of those people who didn't learn anything, you know, being in quarantine for like six to eight weeks. I'm just not, I gotta, I gotta learn something. I gotta do something. Yeah, man, I definitely use this time to uh, better myself in ways that I normally wouldn't, um, you know, if we weren't going through this, like, you know, I have to get creative. I've uh, been using like my garden hose as like battle ropes, <laughs> as crazy as that sounds. No, bro. Hey, bro, you got to do what you got to do, man. Yeah. No, yeah, it's crazy, though, man. I uh, I was more, I was mostly like a runner, like a cardio guy. I was actually most of my life, I'd say from kindergarten through sophomore year of high school. I was a fat bastard, dude. And then um, I lost a lot of weight um, going into my junior year, but I kind of did it the wrong way. And like, I was just not really hitting the weights and losing it like the right way. So then yeah, I kind of was like, I know this. Exactly what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. But then um, I'd say since like July, um, you know, I was like getting on like a little bit of a program going and I was like in the best shape right before this. Like I'm still doing good, but obviously like without a gym, you're like limited a little bit. Um, so I'm just kind of maintaining right now. Uh, Do you got a uh, resistance bands? No. Okay. If you, I mean, if you can, uh, if you can find your, oh, give me a quick second actually. Find you some bands like this. Uh, you probably don't need some thicker ones, like smaller one, this one. I mean, they, and I have like a few more that are thicker, all the way up to one that are kind of fat. Um, and use those for various motions. Like you can uh, turn it around. Use this one. We got stuck on my pick. <laughs> and you could use this one, like say hypothetically, as a, like a chest press. So like the band itself is going to give you resistance. Use yeah. the thicker ones for there. Uh, step on it. You can do bicep curls. So I mean, you, it'll be a different kind of lift. I would say maybe um, focus on you know getting more of a hyper, uh, hypertrophy kind of workout in with your resistance bands. You're yeah. not gonna be able to get like their mass power like mm-hmm. you want to right now, or you're not gonna be able to. You, you might you might not even be able to get like your your uh, consistent strength reps either. But like no, just uh, use your bands. Focus on more on a hypertrophy style workout. Your uh, like a 1-1000, one, 2-1000, pause, 1-1000, one, 2-1000, back, like, while keeping the tension. Like, and that's, that's just for, like, your chest press. You can even do that while doing push-ups. You can do it for squats. You know, yeah. you can do it for uh, standing deadlifts and uh, standing deadlifts and uh, one-legged RDLs. You know, uh, but, yeah, grab some bands. Uh, if you don't want to get bands and you just want to, you know, find something that's, like, a little more condensed, buy a kettlebell. Mm-hmm. I got, I How got, much you um, weigh, bro? Right now, I'm probably, like, probably between – 175 180 closer to 180 though okay so realistically speaking most some like 178 something like that yeah about okay yeah. um do you know do, how are you with kettlebell swings good yeah i'm i was doing those um like religiously before this um you know okay grab you like, you can, like what weight i use yeah what weight i was swinging the 50s okay so if you can swing the fifties, that means if you that means if you can excuse me, I'm sorry, if you can swing the fifties, that means you should be able to manipulate like a thirty five, you know, a pounder, so you can start working on yeah. shoulder movements too. I have thirty five um, dumbbells actually. Okay, nice. So you can actually take yeah. the dumbbells use and you can use those uh, for like your hypertrophy uh, hypertrophy work. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what a widowmaker is? Yeah. Okay, yeah, they suck, but like those are really good for those. Um, yeah, probably for right now, is that the heaviest weight you got? Mm-hmm. Probably, I'd probably say just focus on like your tempo work if that's what you're going to be doing. Don't go for so much of a boom, boom, go for one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand pause, yeah. like for your squats, which are rows, the same thing. And just make sure you really put focus on uh, emphasizing what parts of the body you're supposed to move. Because I know, like, say with your rows, a lot of people roll and they roll with their fists. And they honestly, they should be rolling with their elbow. They should be activating their scapula and keeping that engaged while pulling up. So yeah, yeah, man, it was crazy. I actually, I was like last May, I wasn't even able to get uh, 185 off the rack for bench, and then February I hit 250. Let's go. Yeah, and then I got 350 on my deadlift. So, and I'm only like 19, so you know, I got a, uh, still got a, uh, you know. Let's go. Those, those are good numbers. Those yeah. are damn good numbers, bro. Um, as soon as you as soon as you can get back to a gym, those numbers are gonna come back. Take your time when you do, because I don't want you to. If you if you're anything like me, you're gonna go. You're gonna jump back and you know try to do some crazy stuff. But I was able to get some weights. So I've been doing my lifting shit here. Um, 
But yeah, bro, try to like take your time, work yourself back into it, man. Don't go for the super high numbers off the rip. Yeah. You know, even though you might want to throw like, you know, 350 on that bitch, I mean, take yeah. your time, work your way back, bro. But like, because once you work your way back, man, like those numbers are going to jump exponentially, I promise you. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a pleasure having you on today, Tyree. Um, man, oh, thank yeah. you for having me on, bro. Um, we'll definitely keep touch, and um, I hope you're staying safe during this time, man. I am, man. Uh, if you have any questions, bro, man, or you have you need any, uh, have any questions, WWE, or you got any questions about workouts, man, just hit me up on uh, Facebook, bro. Um, you know, once uh, once I get some real for you, I'll show you some real, uh, you know, some of the stuff I've been able to get at. Um, it's been fun. Um, I got punched in the mouth by a guy, like legitimately. It was funny. Oh man! It was, like bro, like like I was supposed to sell the punch, like it was supposed to be a like a fading punch, and the actor said, oh, excuse me, the director said go, and I was ready, but then the director said tie and do. I was, <laughs> and you can't get mad about it. It's just like you just sit there and hold your goddamn yeah. and shit, like man, like just embarrassed. It was fun time, bro. It's fun time. One of these days, I'm, t- I'm telling you right now. Listen, look at me, look at me, and my bearded craziness of my face here. Look at me. I am going to fight The Rock in a movie one of these days, and The Rock is going to whoop my ass. I promise you. <laughs> you heard it here first, people. Tag yeah, The man. Rock. Let's go. Let's set it up. Uh, he's going to kick my ass, though, man. I was trying to be one of his minions in Black Adam, man, but I, I guess I was too late for that. Man. Put me on, bro. But no. But thank you for having me, bro, man. I, I mean, honestly, this was fun, bro. I haven't done anything like this in, like, no joke. No joke. It's been, like, a decade. Since I've done anything like this remotely to, you know, for the show or the challenge. Oh, man, you didn't even get into the crazy stuff, bro. You know, um, hold on, I'll give you a little quick little tidbit. Bro, so you know the real world wasn't my, one, the real world was not my first reality TV show. You know that, right? Oh, wow. Nope. I didn't know that. My first first reality TV show was a show filmed in Lincoln, Nebraska called Tommy Lee Goes to College. Wow. Okay. You're going to hear something even crazier. Okay. My last reality show was not Rivals 2. Well, which one was it then? My last reality show was Bar Rescue. Okay. I was on I was on Bar Rescue on the, the Hookah Lounge episode. Jeez. I meant to check those a, out there. I was actually a bar manager at the spot there. I was one of the I was a bar I was a bar manager at the time, man. I was one of the main bartenders. So it was a fun time. John Tapper was a mean guy. Fun guy, but he's mean, dude. Like that, all that yelling shit is real. He yells a lot. And <laughs> yikes. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, man. old man, man. I appreciate you, bro. Take care, man. All right, bro. Take care.